He kōna e pūrangi tēnei nā te reo irirangi o Aotearoa. We spend a third of our lives doing it. A good night's sleep. Sleep is at a premium. If you can't sleep. Sleep issues. Growing number of sleep disorders. And yet so many of us have trouble with it. Sleeping poorly. A lot of people come in worried about their sleep. Sleeping loudly. People do want to kill people who do snore. Or just not sleeping enough. Sleep trouble touches us all. So, when we hear about new theories on how we might improve our sleep, it's not surprising that people want to try them out. In today's video, we explore the transformative power of sleep sinking and how it can positively impact every aspect of your life. But are these techniques any good? Are they safe? And is there any real science behind it? I'm Stacey Morrison, and this week we're looking at sleep sinking and mouth taping. Sleep sinking is about knowing that you've got a circadian biological clock and aligning your sleep pattern or your sleep schedule with your clock. This is Lee Signal, a professor of fatigue management and sleep health at the Sleep Wake Research Centre at Massey University. And while the term may be new to some, she says sleep scientists have been trying to spread this kind of message for years. The crux of it is spot on scientifically. In terms of reading some information out there, there are some slightly off-base messages happening as well, though. So I think it's good to explore it a little bit more. Right. So in terms of circadian rhythms, is everyone's the same? No. We all have a circadian biological clock, and it is amazing. It does a whole bunch of stuff in terms of keeping us in step with the day-night cycle, and we are all effectively hardwired or programmed to sleep at night and being awake during the day. I'm slightly more an evening type person, so I like to go to bed a little later. Most of us are somewhere kind of in the middle, although there are a few people out there that are extreme morning or evening types. So once we have, uh, I guess, got in touch with our circadian rhythm and then we need to organise our lives around it, does the science suggest that we should all be sleep sinking? In an ideal world, perhaps so. We should be going to bed when we feel sleepy and we should be waking up um, when we naturally wake. But we, many of us also have jobs that don't allow us to do that. And then we have teens, for example, who just biologically, their circadian system has shifted during puberty so that they can't go to sleep until later. Um, and then they want to wake up later, but that's not how the school system currently mm. works. She says there are now studies happening in the US looking into whether senior students should be allowed to go to school later. In the meantime, others who want more sleep are trying out new technology. Today I'm going to tell you about my favourite sleep apps. These are the best apps to help you sleep. So can we invest in certain things that tell us more about our circadian rhythm? So, you know, all that technology we've got out there, Fitbits, Apple Watches, Aura Rings, um, they can tell you some useful information about when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. They are not well designed to tell you about that structure or what we call the architecture of sleep. I've never heard that term architecture of sleep. What does that mean? It's the word that we use as sleep scientists to describe the beautiful and complicated structure of sleep. So we have two main types of sleep, rapid eye movement sleep and non-rapid eye movement sleep. And within non-rapid eye movement sleep, we talk about light and deep sleep. Um, So tonight when you fall asleep, you'll enter light non-REM sleep first, then move into deeper non-REM sleep for a period of time. And then your brain will bump you up into the lighter stages of sleep again. And then you'll have your first episode of dreaming sleep or REM sleep for the night. And you cycle through those different stages of sleep repeatedly throughout the night. And we call that patterning the architecture of sleep, getting that beautiful um, patterning. That's what makes sleep good quality. Okay, so I personally think I need a renovation of my architecture. (laughs) You know, we're not always particularly brilliant at knowing what our sleep is like. But yeah, the important thing to realise is your Fitbit's not going to tell you good quality information Mm. about the architecture of your sleep. 
One of the things about sleep sinking is the idea that we should try and go to bed about the same time every night of the week and get up about the same time. And that can be a little tricky, but it's saying try and keep to a sort of a window of time every night and every morning to go to bed and get up. And our watches and our technology may help us if we look back at it. I think the important thing is not to get too hooked up with the information that those technologies are telling us. Sleep doesn't have to be perfect every single night for us to remain healthy and well. We just want to make sure that we understand the importance of it so that we don't end up binge watching Netflix to 3 a.m. Who um, does that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no one I know. No, no one. And what about the other stuff we're watching? Today we're going to talk about sleep and mouth taping. There are lots of suggestions about sleep techniques on platforms like YouTube and TikTok. Well, I think the theory was that you're meant to use your nostrils and nose to breathe. And what that does is it filters the air and warms the air that goes into your lungs. This is Richard Garten, the brother of one of our producers, talking about mouth taping. It oxygenates your blood. They said something like 30% more than you would normally by breathing through your mouth. So I figured that would be a good thing and tried it. Yes, mouth taping is pretty much just as it sounds. You just take a small little piece of tape and put it over the centre of your mouth and lips. You don't have to cover your whole mouth. And it's hard to do for the first few nights because it feels like you're not breathing properly. But after a while, you kind of get used to it. Richard tried out the mouth taping both to oxygenate his blood and to reduce his snoring, although he only did it for a short time. I ran out of tape. I kind of got sick of doing it. That's something you have to constantly do, and I just got bored with it. Richard does feel there was some value in it, and he'd considered doing it again if he was training for a marathon or something. But while he did his research, watching YouTube videos by journalists and doctors, he's not sure about the science behind it. So let's bring in another sleep expert to find out more. Kia ora, my name is Angela Campbell and I am an Associate Professor at WellSleep which is based in the Department of Medicine at Otago University here in Wellington and I manage the local clinical sleep laboratory here. So we've heard about mouth taping, is that what we're doing? <laughs> well look, this is a trend that has popped up more recently. Um, there isn't any really good evidence that it helps with snoring. Most of the data seems to show that it just changes the sound. It might be just a little bit more muffled, which might be a little bit helpful, particularly for the bed partner, but is probably not really addressing the issue and why snoring is occurring in the first place. Snoring is a sign really that perhaps the back of the throat or the upper airway isn't as open as it should be during the night. Obviously, you know, when we're breathing, we want our airway to be nice and fully open so our breath goes in and out nice and easily. When we think about taping the mouth, um, obviously that's you know, helping us to breathe through our nose. And breathing through our nose has lots of good things about it. We want the air to be coming into our lungs to have particles of dust and things removed and our little hairs inside the nose help with that. It also helps add moisture to the air again which makes it easier for the lungs. But taping your mouth may result in perhaps you making it harder to breathe for yourself if you don't have a good open nasal airway. In Richard's case, his wife's not convinced the mouth taping helped his snoring. I don't think so. She's a reason for heavy sleepers, so. That's lucky for her, because a good night's sleep is important. Lee Signal says most of us need between seven and nine hours. A few people can get by on six to seven hours, and some may need as many as ten. As we've heard, techniques like sleep sinking might help us get our quota, but some online information can be incomplete or oversimplified. I've talked about how you're wanting to align your sleep schedule with your circadian biological clock, but some of the information I saw talked about aligning your circadian biological clock with your sleep schedule, and that's mm. actually not going to work for you no. because your clock is a hardwired mechanism that uses the light-dark cycle to keep us really nicely in step with the day and night. You're going to have a little wiggle room with it, but you're not going to be able to push it around to suddenly be able to go to bed at 9 o'clock at night and get up at 4 o'clock in the morning easily. And so it's about realising that 
there might be some semblance and truth in this information, but you need to go looking for really good quality sources of information to verify what's going on. Which is what we're doing now as well, mm, because a 30-second TikTok only has so much information, but sleep sinking in general, you recommend? The idea of recognising that you've got this biological clock that's driving when you do things during the day and acknowledging that and using it to get better quality sleep, yes, absolutely. It's a great idea. And what about mouth taping? There is some information in some of the online data that makes sense. You know, the fact that breathing through your nose has lots of good benefits. But people aren't very good necessarily at following exact instructions. So there are no (laughs) guidelines on how you tape your mouth, right? And the last thing we want to see is somebody who actually really can't breathe through their nose for physical reasons, grabbing a piece of duct tape and putting it over their mouth. I mean... It's very hard to actually say that this is a good thing with no guidelines and in who we should be recommending it. So I think that really the answer is don't do it. But she has other tips to help reduce snoring. Things like sleeping on your side rather than your back, using the little strips that go across the bridge of your nose. They decrease airway resistance, make it easier for the air to get into your airway. Maybe if you've got a stuffy nose, getting a spray um, from your chemist, thinking about whether you're having alcohol in the evening and maybe reducing that. If you've got a little bit of extra weight, um, seeing if you can drop that, and I know that that's not an easy thing to do. And just also getting a regular sleep timing is really helpful with snoring. So in summary, if I say mouth taping, is it healthy or a hoax? Hoax. That is a good, distinct answer. What about sleep sinking? Is it healthy or a hoax? It's healthy. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Healthy or Hoax, hosted by me, Stacey Morrison. Tēnē te mihi, a big thank you to all of our guests for sharing their time and expertise with us. This episode was produced by Liz Garten, written by Katie Gossett, and Jeremy Veal was the audio engineer. Tim Watkin is executive producer of RNZ Podcasts. Healthy or Hoax is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and iTunes, or wherever you find your podcasts. Hit that follow button so you don't miss an episode. Mauri ora kia koutou, wishing you the best of health. 